If you're new to movement training and animal flow, then you probably have one enduring impression of the training modality. People crawling around the ground. Crawling exercises certainly pose a striking image. Seeing someone crawl like a lizard through the bushes is definitely a little unusual. Whether it's Edo Portal, Animal Flow, GMB or Vava Fitness, crawling is a common feature among many different approaches to movement training. But is it just a gimmick, or are there real tangible benefits to the bear crawl and lizard crawl? Well the short answer is yes. There are many benefits to the bear crawl and other locomotive exercises like it. There are even more when we get a little inventive with the different variations we can do. The first benefit of crawling then is that it develops strength endurance, especially throughout the core. When you crawl, you are under continuous tension. This means that the muscles involved get no time to rest and are flooded with blood and metabolites that stimulate growth. This actually makes crawling a good move for hypertrophy. This is especially true for the lizard crawl exercise as you keep your body low to the ground and therefore maintain an isometric contraction in the pecs, triceps and shoulders. More to the point, this type of training will develop strength endurance. That allows you to exert strength for a long time without getting exhausted. Something that is crucial whether doing manual labour or competing in a sport, especially MMA. Many people get immediately put off by the bear crawl after trying it for a few minutes concluding that it isn't tough enough. But try crawling for one mile and now tell me how your entire body is feeling. Treat this like a loaded carry. Alternatively, try using crawling in the place of running, battle ropes or kettlebells in a bout of high intensity interval training. And if that's still not challenging enough, crawl faster. I someday hope to see a world where it's not unusual to see someone crawling down the road or carrying a kettlebell down the road. Why should we be restricted to public exercises that other people deem to be normal? People be like, why are you doing something that I don't immediately understand? And I'm like, what? But more so than the arms and legs, the bear crawl or lizard crawl exercises also keep the core under constant tension. This makes the movement work very much like a plank or any other isometric hold for the torso. The problem with the plank is that it's boring and not terribly challenging once you develop a certain amount of fitness. The bear crawl or lizard crawl allow you to get the benefits of the plank while also getting plenty of other advantages, like the aforementioned strength endurance for the upper body. The lizard crawl in particular has the added benefit of also training the obliques in an anti-rotation capacity. This has fantastic transfer for any movement that involves a resisting rotation such as wrestling. This is also where the crab crawl or tabletop exercise comes in useful. This movement has you upside down, groin side up, crawling like a crab. This works the endurance of the hip extensors and director spinae in a similar manner, which often get overlooked and are actually more important for many people. Strength endurance in the core can make you more athletic across the board and potentially prevent injury. Another benefit is that many crawls also enhance mobility. In the lizard crawl, you'll be reaching over your head while at the same time bringing your knee up by your side. You can also exaggerate this movement further if you prefer. This is good because it means you're moving in the frontal plane and it means you're exploring a wider range of motion. This is particularly beneficial if you want to improve hip mobility. Another great exercise for mobility is what GMB calls the bear. This is a little confusing as a bear crawl is often associated with the foot hand crawl. That's called the bear crawl exercise in parkour, but beast in animal flow. So we can call these movements whatever we like really. There's no right or wrong way and that really is the fun of movement training. Either way, the GMB bear, or downward dog walk, is like the bear exercise where your butt is sticking in the air. This is fantastic for improving your pancake stretch and opening up the shoulders. Why spend ages in a static stretch position when you can be training your endurance while getting passive mobility gains as well? This is once again that concept of bang for your buck exercises. Then there's the fact that the bear crawl is a cross body movement, making it excellent for coordination and proprioception. Crawling is a movement we perform in infancy, and this helps us to develop the crucial connection between the right shoulder and left hip, and vice versa. We see this connection in the serape effect, whenever we walk or go to throw a ball. This may also be partly responsible for the unusual wiring that connects the left side of the body to the right side of the brain, and vice versa. The nerves that travel from the brain to the peripheral nervous system cross at the medulla, in the brainstem. This is known as the lateral corticospinal tract. So now you know. In short, contralateral movements that cross the midline have potential to thicken the important bundle of nerves that connect the left and right hemispheres, the corpus callosum. A movement like the push-up, for example, requires less processing power than a crawl because both arms are moving through the exact same range of motion. There is one set of instructions split across two limbs. But moving your limbs independently requires you to divide your attention and effectively multi-thread your cerebrum. 
Finally, crawls also incorporate a balancing aspect. The exercise known as bird dog involves resting on all fours and reaching forwards and back with contralateral limbs. This is often used as a warm-up or mobility exercise and is fantastic for stabilising the core while balancing on two points. To do this, we must be aware of the multifidus, which is a long string of small muscles running up either side of the spine. These muscles are extremely strong and contribute heavily to spinal stiffness, but they are also rich in muscle spindles, making them highly sensitive. That's because the multifidus must listen to and anticipate movements and then brace the body to stabilise against them. The bear crawl or lizard crawl effectively utilise the same challenge. This is effectively a moving bird dog and therefore allow you to improve your balance and coordination even further. This also makes this an excellent way to warm up and prime the nervous system before a workout. All crawling movements also benefit from being highly compound. That means they utilise many muscle groups and joints working together, thereby improving general coordination and athletic application of strength. You're not just building the muscles, but the connections between those muscles, and possibly the epimuscular force transmission that may occur via the fascia. It should come as no surprise then to learn that studies have found quadrupedal movement to improve both proprioception and markers of cognition. This type of training was shown to improve performance on the Wisconsin card sorting task. Who'd have thought that crawling around the ground could make you better at sorting cards? Hopefully I've convinced you that the bear crawl and lizard crawl are valuable as they are. But once you start getting creative, they can become even more interesting. You can incorporate any exercise you like with the bear crawl or lizard crawl, just as you can incorporate movements with the push-up. For example, you could include a kick through after every two steps, or you could combine the movement with a burpee. This turns the movement into a kind of complex or hybrid exercise. In parkour, the bear crawl is often used for balancing along beams, railings or branches. This drastically increases the role of equilibrioception and proprioception, the core lights up and you'll even feel your grip working over time if you're on a railing. In short, it might sound or look easy, but it's an amazingly full body workout. And better yet, this may even have more benefits for the brain. Now you really have to listen to that multifidus and create tiny changes in the amount of tension in each limb to prevent yourself from toppling off. I've discussed at length how cognitively challenging any kind of movement is and how much information must be processed at any time. This may be why studies show training that incorporate balancing, asynchronous limb movement and manipulation may actually improve focus, visual spatial processing and more. This actually increases the grey matter of the basal ganglia and you can check the full written version of this post over at thebioneer.com if you want to see the studies that back this up. Best of all, research from Tracy and Ross Alloway suggests that climbing trees, crawling along beams and running barefoot can all help to increase working memory. If you want to know why this might be the case, then I highly recommend watching my last video where I talk about how visual processing actually involves working memory to a very large degree, and the same goes for other types of sensory information. Another cruel variation you can do is to move laterally from side to side or backwards. And moving side to side is particularly useful because there are so few exercises that move you in that frontal plane. Want to turn this into a more brutal conditioning workout? Then try tugging an object while crawling. Get a harness, that's $15 for Amazon, then attach some resistance bands to a few weight plates or a sandbag. This is one of the only bodyweight exercises that can train pulling muscles without suspending a bar or a ring. It's also a great way to increase the resistance and it's a fantastic workout for your mental fortitude. You'll even feel your fingers and grip working to try and dig into the floor if you do this on grass. It takes the crawl from something that might look like a bit of a gimmick into a really punishing workout. Where you'll really feel that pressure though is in the quads because that angle means that you're really pushing off the legs against the most resistance. Another way to instantly make the bear crawl exercise or any other crawling movement more challenging is to crawl up or downhill. Going up is a great alternative to rock climbing if you don't have a centre or crag near you. Coming back down, meanwhile, places much more pressure on the shoulders, especially the anterior deltoids. This can be easily incorporated into a trail run for awesome full body benefits. Throw on some minimal shoes, go for a run across some rough terrain, do some pull ups from a tree branch, crawl along it, then crawl down a hill. You'll light up those supporting muscles, your grip and your cerebrum in ways that you can't manage by simply repeating curls and squats in a cushy gym. To conclude then, crawling exercises certainly have a lot to offer and can complement nearly any training program, but you have to treat it like a serious part of your routine. 
So I hope you found this video useful and interesting guys. If you did then please consider leaving a like and sharing it around. That helps me out immensely and I appreciate it so much. Just clicking subscribe or commenting down below really helps the channel to grow. If you want to learn more about functional training, then be sure to check out my new book, Functional Training and Beyond, available now from all good bookstores. That's an in-depth discussion around functional training and the place that it should have in all of our lives. Alternatively, you could try my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training. The Super Functional program is designed to increase performance across the board, from cognitive function to speed to strength. And there's a discount on right now while we're all dealing with the pandemic. Subscribe, of course, if you'd like to see more like this, and thanks a ton for watching this one. See you next time, and bye for now.